Welcome back. I hope that you all got the chance to play with the applet to see what the graphs of exponential functions will look like. We'll just briefly sketch them right here. <clears throat> what you should have discovered is that as long as the value of p sub 0 is positive, so if we have p sub 0, a to the t, there's two main varieties. There's the type where we have exponential growth. That's when a is greater than 1. And then the type where we have exponential decay, where a is less than 1. But you'll notice that there are certain values of a that we didn't allow. And those are the values of a where, I mean, a equals 0 wouldn't be very exciting. But if a were negative, some bad things happen. So just to see if we can understand why that is. What happens if a is negative? So let's just suppose a were, say, negative 2. So let's try f of t equals negative 2 to the t. What would happen if I tried to evaluate this at 1 half? f of 1 half means that I'm supposed to be taking the square root of a negative number. And this is real valued calculus. We're not allowed to use imaginary numbers. So this doesn't exist. And it's not just f of 1 half that doesn't exist. f of 1 quarter would mean taking the fourth root of a negative number. That's not allowed. f of 1 sixth, f of 1 eighth, f of 1 tenth. And there's even more numbers than that. So for example, if I were to try f of, say, 17 twelfths, you know, the 17 means I can raise the negative 2 to the 17th power. That's no trouble. But I'm still going to get a negative when I raise to an odd power. And then when I try to take the 12th root of that, all of these don't exist. They are undefined. So a graph, if you tried to draw the graph of, say, negative 2 to the t, there are infinitely many holes in the graph where the graph doesn't exist. And in fact, even if you pick the tiniest little bit of the t-axis, no matter how tiny, as long as it's a non-zero length, just in that little piece of the t-axis, there's infinitely many numbers that take this form where the graph fails to exist. So very, very messy. We're not going to worry about that. So now we've seen a graphical way of looking at exponential functions. We looked at some formulas. Now we would like to go back to our word problems to try to look at the function that way. So let's suppose that at time t equals 0 years, A quantity f of t is 100. So that's the value at time 0. We'd like to write a formula for f of t under various situations. So write a formula for f of t if, so a, if it grows 20% per year. So we've got a constant percentage growth rate. That's how we know this is an exponential function. So we can write our formula f of t, p naught. So in all of these, the value at time 0 is 100. So p naught is always going to be 100. And it's going to be to the t. And we want to grow. 10, 20% a year. Well, earlier when we grew 10% a year, we put 1.1 in here. So what should we put for 20% a year? We should put 1.2. So the growth rate of that, that graph would look something like this, exponential growth. What if it decreases 85%? So f of t will still be 100 times a to the t. We want to decrease 85%. So if you started with 100, you should lose 85% in the first year and land with only 15% at the end of the year, meaning you take your 100 and you multiplied it by 0 0.15. Losing 85% is the same as keeping 15%.
how about if it grows 200% per year? All right, this is always one that generates a lot of debate among people. What should f of t be if you are growing 200% a year? And the choices that people usually come up with are whether to put a 2 in here or a 3 in here. So what if it said that you were growing 100% a year? That means you started with 100, and at the end of the year, you grew 100% of that, meaning you gained another 100, and you ended up with a total of 100 plus 100, or 200. So if this were growing 100% a year, we would want to put a 2 in here, because growing 100% is the same as doubling. But we're growing 200%, meaning if you started with, say, $100 in your account, and it grew by 200%, at the end of the year, you had gained $200, and you ended up with $300. So growing 200% a year is actually the same as tripling. And if we were growing 300% a year, it would be quadrupling. And if we were growing 400% a year, quintupling. So stop and think about that if you are, are not sure. What if we wanted to say it decays 200% a year? What would that mean? That wouldn't, mean much, wouldn't make much sense at all, despite what you sometimes hear on TV and see on the internet. Like you see something like the, popul the, the pollution level in the lake went down 200%. That's not possible, right? If it went down 100%, there was no more pollution. That's the most you can go down. So we're not even going to write it decreases 200% per year. That doesn't make any sense. Not to mention that it would give us one of these negative exponents, and we've already seen all the dangers that can happen when we do that. How about this one? It grows 40% every two years. Now, first thing to ask, is this the same as part A? Part A, we were growing 20% a year. Is that the same as growing 40% every two years? Well, let's check. In part A, we started with 100. We grew 20%, meaning after one year, we had gained 20%, and we were at 120. But now, because this isn't a linear function, we're supposed to grow in the next year 20% of this amount. So if we gain 20% of 120, that means we gain another 24, and we land at 144 after two years. So because of this effect of compounding, growing 20% a year is the same as growing 44% every two years. So we know that this is actually a different question. Growing 40% in two years is not the same as 20% a year because of the way exponential functions work. So we'll start with our 100. Growing 40%, growing 20% meant we put a 1.2. Growing 40% means we should put a 1.4. But if I put a 1.4 and I put a t up there, we're growing 40% how often? This would mean we're growing 40% every year, which is twice as fast as we want it to happen. So the way we fix that is by putting t over 2 up here. Now let's check. When I plug in 2 for t, f of 2, I get 100 times 1.4 to the 2 over 2, which is exactly 1. So my exponent becomes 1 after two years, and I've got 100 times 1.4, which is 140, which is a gain of 40% in two years. Now you might be worried, is this really an exponential function? We said in an exponential function the variable was just supposed to be a t, right? Not a t over 2. So if you're worried about that, and you don't need to do any rewriting like this, this is actually the nicest, cleanest way to write that, but by one of our exponent rules, how could we rewrite this? I could rewrite it as 1.4 to the 1 half all to the t. I think that's by exponent rule number 2 from before. So 1.4 to the 1 half all raised to the t. And again, there's, there's really no great benefit in writing that way, this way. This is the way that it's easiest to see what's happening. You're growing 40%. Every two years, this is just to reassure you if you were wondering whether this was a bona fide exponential function. And it can be written in the form p naught a to the t, so it is. And let's try one more like that. So now let's say it decreases, decreases 10% every quarter year.
So we've got f of t is 100 to the sum something. So decreasing 10% means that you keep 90%. So we're going to want to put 0 0.9 inside there. But now if we put t up there, that's decreasing by 10% every year, which is much too slow. In this case, we wanted to speed it up, so we divided, we wanted to slow it down, so we divided by 2. In this case, we want to speed it up, and so we multiply by 4 up there. Now let's check to see if this works. A quarter of a year means t is 0.25, or a quarter. So if I put in 0.25 for t here, what does the exponent become? It becomes 4 times 0.25, which is 1. So 100 times 0.9, or 90, that's exactly what we want. After a quarter of a year, we're down to 90, meaning we've decreased 10%, which is just what this is supposed to be doing. Does that make sense? All right, last little fun question here. If you have the choice of three investments, the first investment goes up 20% in, in the first year and then down 20% in the second year. Choice B is that you do the reverse, so you go down 20% and then up 20%. And choice C is you just keep your money under your mattress. Which of these should you choose? So let's try them. In the first one, I think I said we go up 20% first. So we go from 100 to 120. And then we lose 20%, but not 20% of the original 100, 20% of this, meaning we lose 24, meaning we're down to 96. In the second example, we went down 20% to 80, and then we gained 20% of that to 96. And in the third example, we just keep the money under the mattress, and we just stay at 100 all the way along. So this is a funny way how percentages work. Going up and down the same percentage, you end up losing in the end. And it shouldn't be a surprise that we got the same answer of 96 in both of these, because when we multiply, as we said earlier, multiplication is commutative. So whether I multiply by 1.2 and then by 0.8, or by 0.8 and 1.2, I should get the same answer either way. Let's do two more word problems. So if an investment grows 20% per two years, or every two years, what is its annual percentage growth rate? And this isn't going to work out to a nice number, so we're going to ask for it correct to three decimal places. So this is the first time we're actually going to do any sort of decimal approximation of one of our answers. And let's try to again think about what should a reasonable answer be. So because of compounding, we know that if we grew 10% every year for two years, we'd end up with more than 20%, in fact, 21%. So we expect the answer to be a little bit less than 10%. So what do we need first? We need a formula. So P of t, it's an exponential growth because we're growing at a constant percentage rate. P naught times 1.2, we're growing 20%. If we put a t up there, that's too fast, just like the example we just did. This is growing 20% every year. We want to slow it down to be t over 2. Do we know what p sub 0 is? Do we know the amount that we have at time 0? We don't, but we don't need to. So if you want, you could put in your favorite number for p sub 0, as long as it's not 0. But it doesn't matter, as we'll see. So we want to figure out what the annual percentage rate is. Annual means after one year. So one way to do this, and there's a variety of ways to do this. They will give the same answer. One way is just to evaluate p of 1. So p of 1 is just going to be 1.2 to the 1 half. And if you put that into a calculator, you should get 1.095445 something something. 
And then when I put this problem on homework and exams, a lot of people now say it's 1.09% per year. Does that seem reasonable? If you gain just a little over 1% a year, do you think you'll really get 20% in two years? That seems hard to believe. What does this really mean? You're multiplying by 1.095 whatever percent, 1.095 every year, meaning that, as in this case, this meant that you were growing 20% in two years. This means you're growing nine and some percent per year. So that's what this tells us. So the annual percentage growth rate is, and it asks us to give it to three decimal places, so 9.544, and we don't care if you round or truncate, so if you want to just cu cut it off there and say 9.544, or if you see this 5 there and you say, oh, I should round this up to a 5, doesn't matter. Annual percentage growth rate is this. And that's in keeping with what we expected. We thought that the rate should be a little bit less than 10% because 10% a year would give us 21% in two years due to the compounding. One more example. We're going to do one with exponential decay. So carbon-14, you've probably heard of. That's a radioactive isotope. And people use it to date certain types of substances to figure out how old something is. Because these radioactive isotopes have what's called a half-life. So carbon-14 is a radioactive isotope with a half-life of 5,730 years. Meaning that every 5,730 years, you lose half of what you had at the start of the 5,730 years. So our question is, what fraction, and again, let's get it correct to three decimal places, and I hope you're noting that unless the problem says that we want to get something correct to three decimal places, that we're not getting out the calculator at all. So all those other earlier problems tonight. We just wrote out the exact answer. So what fraction, correct to three decimal places, of a sample of carbon-14 will remain after 15,000 years? And again, let's try to be in the habit of thinking what a reasonable answer is. So we know that after 5,730 years, half should remain. After another 5,730 years, so 11,000 and some years, half of that should remain, or a quarter. So we still haven't gotten to 15,000. After three of these periods, which will be 17,000 and some years, a half of that quarter will remain. In other words, an eighth will remain. So we know the answer should be between a quarter and an eighth. What do we need to do? Just like in this example, we have to write a formula for our function. So p of t, do we know what the value is at time 0? We don't know the value at time 0, but that's the beauty of an exponential function like this. It doesn't matter. It's a half-life, meaning that we're keeping a half or losing a half. So in this case, you sort of get lucky. It's 0 0.5 there no matter what. And if I put point 0 0.5 to the t, that means we're going down by, we're keeping half, we're losing half every year. This is much, much too fast. The half-life is supposed to be 5,730 years. So as we discussed earlier, by dividing that by 5,730, we will slow it down by the proper amount. And let's just confirm that. How much will we have after 5,730 years? If I plug in 5,730 here, my exponent becomes exactly 1, and I get p naught times 0 0.5, so I have exactly half of what I started with, which is just what's supposed to happen if we have a half-life of 5,730 years. What do we want to know? We want to know the amount after 15,000 years, so we want to evaluate p of 15,000. And if we put that into a calculator, remember we're expecting a number between a quarter and an eighth. 
we get 0 0.1629 something, something, something. And that is a number between a half and a quarter, so that's the answer. So approximately 0 0.162 or 3, we don't care whether you round or truncate, of the original will remain. And just to be clear, this is a fraction. We don't know how many grams we started with. However many grams we started with, we have 0.163 left. So if we have, I mean 0.163 of that amount. So if we started with 1,000, we have approximately 163 grams left after 15,000 years. That's the end of our exponential functions. We have a check your understanding quiz for you to do. So please go ahead and try that, and then we'll come back and look at some more functions.